So, welcome ladies and gentlemen, I'm on this very first flight uh, on uh, this P92 Technam. Uh, so I'm making these recordings mostly for myself. Um, I'm starting my training as a PPL pilot um, and uh, I think it's good to repeat parts of the lessons that I can. Um, as such, uh, I'm setting um, well, doing, trying to remember everything that I do, uh, and who knows, uh, I couldn't really find anyone doing the same thing online, so I figured might as well. Um, so, I'm training uh, at Teuven Airport, which is an international airport in the Netherlands. Um, it's located some roughly in the east. Um, it's a uh, green airfield, so no active ATC. Um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see how far it goes. I try to remember everything that I had in my lesson uh, and try to do everything that's in the lesson. I have checklists, things like that. Um, I'll try to make it as uh, genuine as possible. Which means we're starting dark. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, make everything as small as I can. Uh, these videos are going to be low effort uh, in a lot of ways. Um, that is to say, um, I'm going to try and do the things that I can. Uh, one of the reasons why you guys have such a large view uh, with a large bit of black is because I have an ultra wide monitor to make things easier for me. Um, so yeah, um, let's see if I can easily switch to the outside. I'm not quite sure if I have that button mapped. Apparently I do not. Oh, there we go. So, um, naturally there's a few things we should do first. One of those things, because uh, it would be the first flight of the day, uh, would be an under-engine cowling check. Um, since it's a bit of a smiley face. Um, when I came there, uh, yesterday um, that was already done so I don't have didn't have to do that um, so I'm going to do the outside checks uh, for uh, a second flight or a first or anyway a flight um, starting up uh, and I, there, of course I might forget things uh, I'm in training uh, I'm just trying to repeat as much as I can so that I don't or uh, that it, it sticks as well as it can um, so first checks would be uh, propellers, uh, are they intact, uh, any nicks, bumps, anything weird. Uh, second would be uh, the openings inside the uh, engine bay, so are the radiators free, uh, any birds nesting in there or anything else like that. Um, uh, after that, uh, go slightly down, check the tire wear, um, which... <laughs> This is in, in this virtual reality is probably going to be quite alright. Uh, second, uh, are all the nuts and bolts correct? Uh, they should be. Um, then passing over to the side of the front of the unit, there is a static port over there. Uh, that needs to be free and clean. Uh, of course, the same goes for the exhaust. Uh, then we go over to your doors. Uh, and your wing. Your wing should be nice and straight, no nicks, no bumps. Um, here is your airspeed indicator which should also be clean and free. Um, on top of your wing uh, there is the fuel port which you should check to see if it's flush and back down. To the latter side um, we're gonna go whoop. Um, first of course you have to turn on your um, master switch uh, so you can turn on your lighting um, I shouldn't have any lighting on actually because I should have my switches off uh, let me see if I can switch back to the inside um, so my master is now on which I did here see master is on um, but my lighting uh, let me just see yeah, so I have strobe land and nav and beacon, but they should. So for whatever reason they're not switching, I probably have them mapped on. Yeah, see, I have them mapped on this one also. Uh, but yeah, uh, they're all on now. <coughs> so we're no longer dark. 
Uh, switching back to the outside of the plane. Uh, so this lighting is functional. Front lighting is functional. Uh, left side tail good. Um, so uh, of course you don't want to leave your switches on too long because uh, that drains the battery. Um, going back to the wings, so uh, are your uh, ailerons straight? Uh, are the hinges correctly placed? Uh, are all the nuts and bolts in place as they should? Uh, same goes for the flaps. Uh, then we move to the side and um, rear of the aircraft. All your rivets should be in place. Painting should be fine. Uh, radio antenna should be fixed properly. Same goes for the windows. Then to detail, you can apparently um, uh, do the height rudder. You, you can um, uh, give it a little jank. See if it's in proper. Um, then check all the sides of all your... Uh, uh, control surfaces, all the hinges and switches and things, are, or the hinges and um, locks, are they in place? Same goes to the right side. Um, same goes for the right side here. So your lighting, your window, your uh, wings, your fuel, your bottom end, uh, and there should have been, or at least on on the, the plane I was flying. Uh, there should be a static port on the side here also. So, assuming that that was the outside checks, so the, the twins. Uh, so, assuming it's you've done the outside checks, so we can move back into the inside. Um, the door. Uh, there was a lock on the side. I don't see that here. That's fine. Uh, I think there was a hot switch to remove your co-pilot. Ha! Ah, so. Of course, I had a co-pilot in there. Uh, I don't want the, to hide the glass cockpit because I had that also. Uh, well, partially, I just had the GPS. Um, so we've done the walk around. The date uh, today should be the 29th. Uh, time is uh, well, not here, but uh, virtually was 9:30, I think. Um, uh, current runway in use would be runway 26, assuming. That the virtual, I'm not sure if I can find the wind sock. There was uh, very little to no wind, uh, slight frontal from, uh, I think that was a roughly 260 degrees, so the 26 was in use. Um, but okay, um, our uh, papers should be on board. Uh, everything's off, so equipment, transponders, magnetos, uh, electricals. Fuel quantity we should have checked. Um, I'm not quite sure. I think you can. Oh sorry, you can, I think you can only check it on the outside of the plane. Um, but we'll see. Mm, okay. Um, fuel selector, because that's the parking brake. That's your pitch. Oh, pitch trim. Fancy. They moved it apparently. Um, so I was checking uh, the fuel selectors. Oh yeah, so here's the fuel selectors. They're on the side. Uh, so on or off. Um, uh, current position is off. Current position is maybe current position. Because this is weird. This is on. Yeah. Uh, and here's the other fuel. Fuel. So that's also on. That's good. Um, we're done a turn on the master switch, so now everything's coming alive. I'm kind of hoping everything is coming alive because I'm not sure where this one's going. Uh, so I don't want to calibrate it, that's not what I'm planning on doing. Uh, but I only have this. Well, I don't have any other electrical. Because that's the emergency locator, we don't need that one. Hmm. Well, maybe if the engine comes live, because it's probably op vacuum operated. Yeah, so without a uh, engine, it's not going to do anything. Um, so master switch is on. All lights are on. Um, stall warning. Um, I think that's on the outside of the plane. I'm not sure if I can check it inside. Actually, I didn't do that last time. 
think. Not sure. Okay. Uh, master switch uh, apparently should be turned back off again. Um, but that's oh, that's the outside check. Yeah, so that's why. Uh, so switching back, uh, our seats are positioned correctly. Apparently, um, well, let's just assume we have uh, our seat belts on. Um, doors are closed and locked, so we should have closed them, and there should be a lock around there somewhere. Um, radio transponders are off. Our circuit breakers, they're all in, so that's good because otherwise it would be like this. So they're all in, that's good. Um, Parking brake is on. Parking brake. So parking brake should be on now. Um, I'm not quite sure if I have a if, if, if it's actually the lever because that's going to be annoying. But we'll see. Uh, parking brake is set. Transponder is off. Circuit brakes are uh, so we're going to go to the starting engine checks. Circuit breakers are in. Throttle should be opened slightly, apparently. Uh, carb heat is cold. Why is your carb heat? Uh, that's 100%, so that's cold. Yes, carb heat is cold. Uh, choke. Mm, I don't think this virtual machine has a choke. Let's just assume it doesn't. Uh, so, but anyway, the choke should be fully open because it's a cold engine. Everybody clear pop. Yep. Um, the master switch is on. Strobe lights are on. Uh, your ignition switch is going to go to both. Um, we're going to start. Okay, uh, so the engine is on, this one's coming into vacuum, so that's good. Uh, we should be at around a thousand RPM, so we should lower the... Okay, so this engine just doesn't go to a thousand, sure, okay. Um, oil pressure should be green now. Oil temperature, oil, yeah, oil pressure is in the green. Fuel, fuel, oh we have fuel levers here, but how nice. Uh, this will be the battery, yeah. Um, choke should be turned off. Engine instruments, so everything looks fine, and we should be getting some charge, which we are, uh, I think. Uh, so before we're gonna go taxi, we have to turn the radio on, which is already on. It's in the wrong frequency, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Should be on one thirty. Too locally, I thought. Anyway, okay. Um, we're gonna check the. Uh, gonna uh, turn the transponder to ground. Uh, I'm not sure if I have a transponder in this plane. I'm not seeing it. Oh, I have a transponder here. Yeah. So, uh, transponder should be set to. Uh, well, it's just to put it on test, so let's remember it. So it's going to be post put on test. Uh, flaps. We're going to whoop, try and see if I can find them. Lower the flaps. Fully lowered, that's fine. Uh, we're gonna, also going to move them back up. That's also good. Uh, we're going to do a radio call. I'm not sure if I have a... I don't think so. Let me just see. Uh, yeah, see, 132.325. I'm going to say, hey, this is me. Uh, so, um, yeah, in real life, we would be, um, uh, hello, this is, uh, I think, anyway, um, you know, uh, in our case, Papa Hotel, um, uniform, uh, Lima, November. Uh, Training flight in Deja, and then everybody says good morning. Should be anyway. See if there's anybody there. So uh, we're going to go taxi because we've done radio call. Uh, we're going to release the parking brake. I should have my plane uh, with the least amount of throttle. 
So parking brake is now off, which means it should be able to taxi, and taxiing is something we should do by throttle. I have a feeling my brakes are still on. Otherwise I should be able to move now. Okay, it's just rough. Always check. So we're going to go to runway 26. Because like I said, that should be in use. Going to use a little bit of brake. I think that was too much brake. say this taxiing part is surprisingly difficult in this sim like this uh, yeah so it's morning it was slightly cloudy um, we had overcast at uh, 1700 I think uh, I should be driving a bit more to the left and I must say the I really need to check my uh, rudder because uh, I have a, a physical rudder attached, and it's the the sensitivity is way different than the real aircraft. I need to correct to the left way too much. I can just keep here. If I let it go, it just goes straight to the right. I'm not sure why, because I don't have anything hooked up. So I need a giant left pedal just to correct this. Okay, so we're going to break some more. We have a parking area here which we're going to use to do our pre-engine run-up checks. Uh, so we know our brakes work even though everything's being terrible. I hope my rudder isn't stuck. I need to check on the outside in a second. Because like I said, they keep on moving to one end which is Insanely annoying. Okay, um, I think wind conditions are incorrect because if you look at the wind sock there, uh, let me just zoom in for you. Um, so that's five knots, ten knots. So it's ten knots constant um, blowing in from the south, which is not the conditions that um, I was flying in. I'm going to see if I can change the weather a bit because I had reasonably clear skies. I'm not quite sure why. Okay, it's there because they didn't have live weather. So I'm going to have to make the weather. Um, yeah, I had clear skies, which I'm annoying. Can I do the live weather today? Because today is reasonably the same weather type. Oh, this is way too much wind. It'll be fine, but it's just too much. Where's my wind? How can I? How can I do that? So I had little clouds, and it was 9:30. This this is a reasonable approximation, I suppose. Uh, this is 1600 feet, so yeah, that was quite alright. And the gusts were two knots coming from the west. Should be okay. So this is more reasonable. Uh, who knows? Uh, let me just check outside to see whether or not my rudder actually functions. In the Because I'm not quite sure if it's. Oh, 
laggy laggy. If it's really doing. Yeah, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Okay. Uh, so, switching back inside. Uh, engine roundup checks. Brakes, we did. Nose wheel should be straight now. Uh, brakes are on. Uh, throttle is idle ish. We don't have a mixture. We don't have prop governors. Uh, oil temp should now be in the uh, just under green because the machine never really got high. Uh, but I think this is the oil pressure, uh, which should be around 100 ish. 110, so fine. Cylinder head, I think this is cylinder, cylinder's fine. Our oil temp is there, which is just under, uh, so roughly at 90, which is fine. Uh, oil pressure is 4 bar, which is nice. Uh, amper meter, this one should have been charging, but fine. Uh, so we're going to throttle up, which should be 1600, but it's not going to be 1600. Still holding brakes. Uh, then we're going to do the carb heat because if I open the carb it should slightly lower the RPM which it does which is good um, uh, ignition one so what you do is you move it to one ignition that should lower the levels then you go back to both then you go to one the other should do the same give a slight RPM drop then go back to both uh, we're going to put the throttle back to idle. And that was the engine run-up checks. Then, before start and takeoff checks, we have the seats which are still secured. We have our seat belts which are still good. Your trim is set to neutral. Because um, this is the trim. Um, uh, we're going to do the flaps to take off. I think we had flaps here. Yep, yeah, we do. Uh, so take off would be 15. So yeah, that's the flaps to take off. Um, the doors are closed, the ignition is on both. Um, <coughs> car heat is cold. Uh, fuel shutoff valves are still on, otherwise the plane won't run. Uh, lights as required, which is everything at this point. Um, radio we put on 132.25. Uh, transponder should be set to altimeter and abort procedures. Okay, so um, if we have to abort, there's a few different abort scenarios. Uh, first would be while on the run-up. On the run-up that's fine, nothing really happens. When it's on the uh, point where we start our um, takeoff, uh, we can uh, still uh, uh, take off all throttle, uh, stay on the ground, um, head left as fast as we can away from the runway. Uh, when we are just ramping up and we are at our V1, so when we start to do our liftoff, we can still, because this is a very long runway, uh, pull the throttle full down and, and stay or get back on the ground. When we are up and we have no more runway left, we have to put her down uh, in a 45 degree angle, roughly in the front. Uh, wherever it fits, that's where it goes, and if it doesn't fit, we'll have to make it fit. Um, if we have an abort somewhere higher up, that's different. There is also a uh, part where we're going to talk about fires on the plane, because that's what I did yesterday also. Um, but we'll see. <laughs> Let's hope it's not going to come to that. So, that's the abort procedures. Uh, our parking brake is off, because I already um, changed my feet. Uh, okay, so the brake, there's only one brake, which is only on one hand. Okay, so now I understand what my foot is doing, that's good. Um, we're going to go to the, the line up, which is not a taxi, but I'm going to do it like that anyway for now, uh, which would be, in this case, uh, our case, Papa, uh, Lima, uh, November, uh, starting line up sequence. Uh, and that's your... Uh, checklist before, and now we're going to go to the takeoff part. Um, so we're going to go and line up, check if there's anything here. But we can, there's nothing, so we can move. Okay, we're going to do braking wise. Oh, this is uh, that's why this is so annoying. We're going to do a line up, but 
what I want to do first is drive up to the line and then go take a nice scenic tour. If there's nothing going to be in our way, which there isn't, so we're going to line up, which our radio guy so nicely mentioned that that's what we're going to do. in the center of the runway and there's a black spot in real life there which is not there so we're at the center this is a place where we don't want to be too long we are going to full open the throttle keep it in center line and our rotation speed is 45, 48 so that should already be here keep it on the rear wheels and still have full throttle, going to go up. So no abort procedure needed, that's good. So bye bye ground. I think the nose is up a bit too much for the lift, we need to lower it down slightly. Keep the runway a bit more beneath us, because I'm moving off I think. So there's a big tower in front of us, which is where I'm headed. Uh, we are roughly, I think, at 400 altitude. Yeah, so our flaps are going to go down. Reduces the lift. We still want to keep on going up because we are still in a climb. Our carb heat is allowed to be cold. Uh, we're going to see if our engines are in the green, which it is. That's good. Um, and the best climb rate is at 60 knots. Uh, oh, it's crap, this thing is at kilometers, so that should be roughly around here-ish, 120. Um, so, we are now flying over, I think that's Apeldoorn. We had the, the tower here where we were heading. Um, and in my test, or my, my training flight, uh, because we're going up to, our altitude is a bit too much already, we're going to go out right, so north. I think. I'm not sure. Could be south. Huh. Let's see. But we were going to turn to the. I think it was northwest, which we should have done at 700 feet, which is annoying. Uh, but there should be. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's there because I think I already passed it. Yeah. So this is the A50, which is a large road heading towards um, Zwolle which we should be able to see somewhere in the distance. We're going to keep that one in and we're going to level off at 1700. Because that's roughly where I want to be, which is a bit too high because I think we were uh, staying on 1100. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, so we still have the... Let's just go back to 1100 here. I don't need full power anymore. So I'm going to rev it down to, because I was, I was way in the, the airspeed is way too high, I didn't check. I need to lower the airspeed. There, that should be more stable flight. Um, in case you're wondering, I'm not using a stick, I'm using a yoke right now. Um, so, we're following the A50 no, uh, to the east. Um, I'm saying north, but I'm not sure, is it? Yeah, it's north. Nice. Okay, so north. <laughs> uh, so we're flying north. Uh, we should, apparently, because uh, we need to head... Yeah, this is roughly 1100. Vertical speed is slightly low, so I need to go a bit up. Uh, and I need to... Or I can trim my nose up a bit to keep stable flight. Uh, we're still flying over the A50. There should be... Cause, yeah, we're heading in the right direction. But I'm 
not exactly sure because this is still the A50. Uh, I'm going too low. Uh, I should have kept my Lindbergh reference, but I'm thinking about where I'm going too much. That's better. stable flight for now. Um, okay, so the thing is, uh, we should, because we're still on the A50, uh, we should be traveling somewhere. Uh, let me just, because I, I see the waterway which I'm supposed to see, I still have the A50 down below. Mm. We are in a seemingly somewhat stable flight. I could lower the throttle slightly to get a bit better to where I want to be. But it could be me. We should reach uh, a shooting range at some point, I think. I'm trying to see. I'm going to open a uh, quick maps here. Still flying reasonably. Flying. Um. Oh yeah. Okay. So uh, I know what I did wrong. Uh, Flight-wise. So I'm going to. Exactly. So we're going to go. West, it's going to make a turn. So making the turn, what I should have done before, I know what I can do now, let me just put it back straight, um, is uh, check my instruments. My instruments are reading fine, everything's green. Check outside if there's anything I would hit. Looks clean, and then I can hit a turn. And I need slide up to keep my level flight. I could add a slight bit of throttle if I want to keep the same speed. Okay, so we're going to turn again. Everything's still clean, everything's still, everything's still in the green, and we are heading back to stable flight at the same RPM level, which is way too high, um, or at least in the engine that I had, uh, 2100 RPM was the go speed. Yeah, so we're stable at 1100, that's good. Um, because cloud level should still be at 1600, which looks fine. Um, so you have the map on your bottom left um, that shows a piece of air which we can fly through, however, uh, that, that's the shooting range, but it shouldn't be green, it, it's more uh, darkish, especially uh, we're currently flying in winter, so it shouldn't be this green, but we'll see. Still 1100, still on stable uh, flight, trim sh apparently 22%, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, um, the, the shooting range is on our right right now, uh, but I moved it. Or at least I should have gone to the left sooner, I think, because I know I passed it to the left. And I think I know what I missed. Um, so we're going to head to the right in a few seconds, so north. Uh, and then I think I can show you what I missed. Oh yeah, and that was something else that I uh, will learn again. Uh, so, with the sun, visuals are near perfect. Against the sun, you hit a lot of water apparently, so or a lot of dirt. So you see absolutely nothing. Oh 
Okay. So. We are now heading. Uh, we're gonna almost head to the right. Because you can see, see, I think, the shooting range over there. Not quite sure. We'll see. Still doing stable flight at roughly 1100. Dancing a little bit, not too much. Uh, heading west, apparently, uh, with a trim of still 22. So, still going good. I'm not sure what this. Let's just do map. There you go. Much better. Uh, which should be Eindhoven. Or Teuge. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, can you just put me back on map then? Yeah, there we go. That's the way I wanted it to look. So you can see here the shooting range, which we're going to go a bit more north and then, or a bit more uh, to the west and then head north because that's where I want to go. Uh, we don't have an ILT. I don't think I have an ILT in the, the locator transponder thing. Um, I think I have one in the in the real world uh, plane. Altitude is creeping up slightly. Engine RPM. Mm, yeah. So let's take a look. Uh, so, the thing was, we were flying here, and I was supposed to fly to the three islands, which is one, two, three, there. So that's where we're headed. Uh, so I should have checked my engine instruments, I should have checked outside, I should now also check, because we're losing quite a lot of speed and height, which we shouldn't, because we should keep on the same level of altitude. Now we're back at where we want to be, and we are also. So you have to check your Lindbergh reference, as in you have to see. Okay, this is the altitude and or the, the 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 attitude of the plane where we want to be to keep level flight. And you can see we're just going underneath the clouds, and we have those three islands there. On our right, we have the shooting range, and you can see it's a bit more desolate not much there way less greenery and it should be well like I said this is it's better to see when you're in real life so still heading through those three islands reasonably level flight I think we're inching up a bit we'll push it down slightly slightly less throttle should do the same And now we're going to do a right turn, so check our instruments, everything's green, check outside. Nobody's trying to kill us. And we're going to go to the right, keep our nose up slightly. We're going to follow the shooting range. So to the right you can see the shooting range, on the left we have a river, which apparently is the Drontemir. So uh, it's the, the bottom side of Lelist, uh, um, Flevoland, so uh, on that side you have um, the Flevopolder, which is a newly created ground. Um, newly is like, I think it was the, the, the 70s or something, I'm not quite sure actually. Oh wow, that's bad. Let me just quickly check. Because uh, it's an, a newer province, uh, it's reclaimed or made land. Uh, 
plane should be stable without any interaction, which apparently it is. Nineteen forties, fifties. Yeah, so in nineteen sixty-eight. Yeah, so that's new. Yeah, so all this this round, uh, and those are actually there. Those uh, windmills, electricity mills. Um, that's all reclaimed land. So that wasn't land. That was a uh, sea. Actually, it became a lake, and then it became uh, uh, the flavor boulder. Uh, there's an airport over there, Lady Stud somewhere. Uh, so yeah, and on the right side, you can see this shooting range, which is way harder to see here than in real life. But you can see it's it's less dense with foliage. We are still roughly in stable flight. Vertical speed sometimes goes down a bit, so I need to correct that slightly. Uh, altitude is still fine, flaps are still down, and uh, we still have everything in the green. So that's good. Um, we are currently heading towards uh, Zwolle, I think, which would be the biggest city, which probably is there, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm trying to out into the distance. I, um, I think I should be on my turn coordinator slightly. Let me just check. Well, not really. So, whoa, too much. Well, this is more like the real world. It was way, way difficult to find. Altitude's going down. I think. So, okay, I'm roughly back on track, let's aviate before we do anything else. Um, but let me just see, because we are still flying, and I need to, because it's difficult to see on this virtual map, from down a bit too much. Um, so back to here, we're passing, yeah, so we're heading to, to Zwolle, uh, but that's not that far. Um, Zwolle uh, should actually be uh, this bigger city to the front here. Um, and to our right, we still have the shooting range. And when the shooting range ends, uh, so probably roughly there, I think, uh, this will be the city of Rezip. City, town, whatever. Um, and we should be currently flying over the A28, apparently, which could be this thing here. Seems plausible. Uh, but then this would be Razip. Uh, and then there should be... Because there's some water here, yeah. Uh, and that's the transference from Gelderland to Overijssel, which is two different provinces, yeah. Okay, so this is Vesip. Um When we are over Vesip, we should be at the end of the uh, shooting range, which is true because it ended right there on that point, I think. Um, so we are now going to go right into the sun. Um, yeah, we're going to go right into the sun. to the right. So uh, what did we do before? We checked our things which are all in the green. So the amp meter is now really in the green so it's really charging. Um, so that's good. Um, we check our sectors to see if there's anything there which there isn't. So we make our right turn which means slightly nose up, right. My nose is slightly below the horizon which should be so like this. This should be a stable flight. Anyway, we can turn more. And we're going to go parallel to the shooting range for now. And now you can see how much more difficult HDR uh, seeing is, has become. And we should, on this tiny map, yeah, see also pass.
we're still roughly in stable flight. Like I said, we have very little wind, um, and in no um, flight level uh, or the the cloud base was getting higher at this time. Um, so uh, we were flying still at the 1100 mark, uh, and uh, we were headed towards the uh, ISIL. Uh, but this should be the A50, which it is. Uh, but that's why we're heading to the ISIL. So the ISIL uh, is, a, is, a, is a river which is running here, I think, because that's from Zola. Uh, and it's going to make a, a bend, which we were passing. Uh, you can see the bend uh, bottom left here. Um, so we're going to go straight on until there, but we can go and increase our altitude. So increasing the altitude, if I remember correctly, you wanted to remove your carb or turn it on. I'm not quite sure if it was on or off, uh, but switch it anyway um, to, before, uh, de to make sure you don't get icing. Um, you're going to uh, look out your window for as far as you can. You're going to increase your nose up until you get your 120 or 60 and then give full throttle because this should be your best climbing attitude. So the highest level of climb possible with the least amount of ground movement. We're going to go up to 2100. Which in this sim now should be in clouds. So we'll probably have to stay just below a bit too high. nose was a bit too high. Yeah, so we're hitting cloud base right now, so we'll probably have to stay slightly below if we want to keep seeing things. So I'm going to slightly level off. I should keep throttle on. We are roughly at the level where I want to be. And we can go back to 2100. And we can switch our de-icing. Now you see that the ISIL river is coming here underneath our wing, so if we look to the right we should have the A50 somewhere, I don't think that's the A50, that's water, so no A50, there it is, there to the right, you see? So we're going to go to the right, which means check your instruments, which is fine, check outside, make a right turn. We are currently still going up, which I shouldn't have been doing. So let's just go a bit lower underneath the cloud base. And we want to head back to the A50. I'm trying to find it. Is that it? I'm not quite sure. Let me just. Yeah, yeah, it should be past the water and then it reaches quite close to the water, so I think that is it. Okay, so if that's the A50, we're going to follow the A50. I still have my nose trim on, so which is correct if nothing else changed. Should keep roughly level flight. So we're going to move the A50 to be beneath our right wing. But I think we moved it to the left wing. I'm not quite. We'll, we'll see in a second. Yeah. So this is the A50. Yeah. You see, large highway. Um. So I'm slightly drooping. Just barely, but still, we're lower, 200 feet, which is not little. The cloud is dissipating, I think. Wow, cool. Did I just see some traffic? 
No, okay. I am lowering quite a lot now. Uh, we're crossing the A50, I'm going to put it on my left hand side because that's fine whether or not I use it left or right. And if I'm not mistaken, I wrote. Yeah, that we were doing 190. That was, I think, just me. So the A50 should be here. I think. So we're crossing it slightly, <coughs> which is what I wanted to do. Echo Hotel Tango Echo Traffic Papa Niner, 2016 miles north, 1,900 feet inbound to land runway 26. Oops. Back to the right. Because I said we wanted to keep it on our right. No, our left. So this is mostly just keeping level flight, which I'm not doing because I'm going a bit up and down, a bit popping. But I still have the A50 here. So I want to keep it to my left because then I can see better. Of course, every time I do a bit of a turn, I can check because my heading changes. But there it is, the A50. So at this point in time, uh, the instructor wanted to show me that we have stable flight, so I'm going to put the nose down slightly on the trim. Um, and that even if you now use your rudder without really correcting anything, the plane itself pretty much puts it back to where it wants to be. So it stays a bit off course, but you can roughly steer the plane with the rudder, because it's stable flight. Okay, so we're crossing, we still have the A50 here, um, and at this point in the lesson uh, I was wondering where everything was, because I, I didn't get really lost, but I wasn't quite sure. So, um, this is around Apeldoorn, which means that if you look to our left, we should be able to find our runway. Because it is on the left hand side, I'm just going to try and see if I can find it because it should be reasonably close. Whilst keeping the plane level, because it's oop, being annoying. We still have the A50. Which we need, mind you. But it should now be straight left. Oh, there it is. See? There it is. Thank you, runway lights. Um, the I'm not sure if we actually have runway lights at that airport, but sure. So there it is. Which means that the big building we were heading towards should be in here somewhere. Uh, either to the right or to the left, I'm not sure. But it should be here. So, runway. Um, so we're technically not in circuit. So the circuit goes up, uh, goes round, uh, and goes back down. So that's left hand, right hand circuit would be here. Uh, for runway 26, of course. Um, to join your runway, uh, I'll see if I can find a nice 
window, so here's the A50 still. To find, join your circuit, um, first of all, the circuit is at 700 feet, so it's lower than we are now, quite a lot, so we need to go lower in a second. Um, second, you can only join it from Point Sierra, uh, which is roughly here-ish, um, in this direction, so that anybody will join like so. Reason being um, that everybody expects you being there as opposed to somewhere else and if you go past that point you have to make a call. Um, this is the A50 we're going to cross. Uh, I'm not quite sure which highway that is. Let me just check for you. Uh, that would be the uh, A1. And when crossing the A1 uh, we know we can turn and head towards Point Sierra. Uh, and I'm just going to see if it can find, uh, yeah, because here I have an approach chart. Um, this is the aerodrome chart. It's not what I wanted to find. Fun though. Uh, this is the visual approach. Yeah, this is the chart that I wanted you guys to see. Uh, let me just see if I can put that on screen for you real quick. Um, I'm going to add a uh, browser capture. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I'm not sure if this will work. Oh, everything's moving. Um, and then let me just see if it works. Yeah, it does. So uh, this is the approach chart for the So yeah, uh, let me. Uh, uh, if I make it slightly bigger just for a second. Um, so you can see uh, we just passed the A50, which is on the left-hand side of the map. Um, the A50 uh, goes down, then you have the A1, which is on the bottom of the screen. And then if you head, uh, so Point Sierra, which is center, you can go up. And then depending on which hand your circuit area is, uh, you have to make your turns accordingly. So downwind, um, uh, final or base. Um, so yeah, I'm going to make it small again on the video so you can keep looking. And you can actually fly there. Yep, good enough. Uh, switching back to the plane and let me just order move up there we go let's see uh, back to the plane uh, so we should be at 700 feet now because that's where the uh, the, the thing is at uh, we are way too high so we're going to lower uh, which meant a carb uh, which means heading down lowering engine speed We're heading back down to 7, and if I'm not mistaken, did I already pass the A1? No, 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 that's there. See? That's the uh, the A1 at the front. So I want to go down to about 1100-ish. Uh, off. Back to roughly stable flight. So this is the A1 uh, and Point Sierra is down at the, the, I think it was red, but this is a white building so it should be around here somewhere. Um, still going slightly lower. Well we need to be at 700 so that's good, but this should be stable flight I think. 
Yeah, it is roughly. So let's say at 800 for now for a second. Uh, we could do a call saying that we're going to join uh, Sierra at about uh, a kilometer or, or so out. Um, I'm lowering quite a lot. My engine is too low, I think. So, okay. Uh, so the A1 was here somewhere. There. And Point Sierra should be here somewhere. Let's just head to the left a bit better. Always check, of course, engine values and to see if there's any traffic, because this is a part where there should be a lot of traffic. So we're going to cross the white building underneath us, I think. Oh, that, that white building, yeah. That tiny red one. There should be some, some ground works here somewhere, which turn reddish, I think. So still staying at 700, because we want to stay at 700 now. Not quite sure if this is Sierra. It's difficult to tell, because this is in a rose, and I don't remember Sierra being inside of a rose. Rose, but I, th yeah, I think it is. So we should have passed Sierra. We're still roughly at 700, so uh, the airport should be quite straight ahead. Uh, we're going to join the downwind leg, if I'm not mistaken. Could be wrong. Let me just check that in a second. Um, they think we're too fast, which should be, so we can lower a few things. We can decrease. There should be a checklist before we do this. Let me just quickly grab that checklist. Uh, yeah, so down approach checks. Uh, our fuel quantity should be good. Our fuel selector should, because I, I did so many things that I didn't do. So the approach checks. Uh, fuel quantity should be okay. Um, we should have 30 minutes of fuel left, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, our fuel selector are, are both on. We know the instruments are still green. Carb heat is warm, because I pushed it in, I think. Uh, radio is still on. Flight instruments are still as they are. Uh, brake fresh, so we uh, should check that there is pressure on our brake system. Uh, doors are still closed, of course, seat belts are still good, all equipment is still stowed, and we have contacted that we are in indeed on Sierra, so that we did. Uh, we're going to do the downwind checks, which uh, already, if we're there anyway, um, so we have our ignition set to both, uh, we have the uh, carb heat uh, still to warm, landing lights are on, um, throttle is reduced as far as we can uh, and the speed should be as low as it can and we're going to put the RPM as low as we can um, and then on base we're going to uh, put the flaps as we want them to um, uh, let me just check a few things uh, yeah so downwind and base yeah okay downwind base and final So I'm a bit low, I need to go up a bit. Since I want to bleed off speed, that's fine, because I want to hit that 120 kilometers, so it should be around 60 knots. And that should be on base, but still. Might as well get that back to where I want to be. Uh, and I think I don't have flaps yet. No. Which is, I think, fine here. Uh, so we're going to join, because we have the runway right there. So we're going to join downwind. Of course we checked. Keep our nose up. Not to lower. We are now, because there's the, the other city, so that should be indeed the edge of the downwind. And then we are going to increase a bit of RPM, because we're lowering a bit much. I'm going to add flaps to bleed off some speed, gain some lift. 
and we still have the runway there somewhere there yeah there you go okay uh, we are going to hit around 350 height when we want to so this is roughly where we should be lowering some speed making a left hand turn we are going to go to 350 height we want to keep above stall so that's above this speed Leading it off, should be a building right there, which should be the edge, which we need to reach to get our downwind correctly. Leading off until around 350-ish. Heading towards the runway, checked of course if we could. Trying to keep the runway, so it was a bit too early. Trying to keep the runway in sight, keeping my eyes on the numbers. Still doing good. Hands on the throttle and on the controls, trying to keep it in center, heading towards the 26. If needed, rudder. So I'm a bit too. Should have gone lower. Lower, 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 lower. Pull up. Keeping it centered. Lindbergh reference, so I'm looking in the down left. Oh, close to stall, which is fine. Shouldn't have ballooned as much. so I could have done this better, I'm not quite sure why the ground effect is the way it is. Shouldn't pull it up too much. Yeah, I'm way over correcting here. My real life landing was way better. <laughs> oh, this was horrible. <laughs> I mean, I can walk away, but it's horrible anyway. Let's just see if I can get my plane off this runway. And we can talk about things, a few things. Uh, this is not an exit, apparently. I'm losing my rudder. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the back end of the runway before I can call it cleared. taxi back if I can get it to move again so my landing sucked <laughs> my approach was great was good but the landing was horrible back to our parking spot and then I wonder how long we've been not quite sure it should be roughly an hour of flight Taxiing is doing better. <laughs> Let me just get back to the yellow line. There we go. Taxiing is doing better. <laughs> uh, I think I should have checked left and right to see if I don't taxi into anything. Probably. I'm sure, that's got to be the case. Not sure where I'm taxiing to, to be honest. Uh, 
genuinely don't know. Let me just check real quick. Because uh, I think... Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm too far. Well, let's just put it down anywhere. For now, I'm sure there's need. I need to be somewhere. So let's just go fuel it up or something. We can do some reading there. Okay, so um, I didn't park in the correct space, but and we've done the approach checks. We've done the downwind checks because the ignition was on both landing lights were on. Car heat was warm. We've reduced our speed. Uh, we've reduced the RPM. We've reduced the throttle. We've put the flaps. Uh, on final, we should have been on 60 knots, which I think we were. Flaps were as required, uh, and we touched down. I think when we had too much speed, that's why we started to jump around a bit. Uh, and it was on max flaps, and we didn't do max flaps. I think we have re we've vacated runway. The brakes are set. The flaps should be go to should go to up before I did anything else. Uh, carb heat should have been put on cold, uh, which I think it should have been on warm. So I screwed up there because that's warm. And that's cold. So now it's cold again. Um, our lights should all be off aside from taxi, which I did, but I, I know it's different. So no landing lights. Uh, so no strobes. Runway. Runway? Landing? Oh, that's weird. It's probably, I'm guessing that's taxi. I'm not sure. Let me just... Nav. Landing. Strobe. Yeah, so another clue. Um, transponder should be set to ground again, which I think this thing didn't have, so I'm going to put that back on test thing. Keep on forgetting what that is. So, we're going to go do, do the engine shutdown. We're going to put the engine on idle as far as it goes, which is where we're at right now. Uh, the radio is going to be turned off. Um, throttle is now closed. We're going to turn, turn, turn. Engine is off. No more vacuum. Um, we can remove the key. Uh, we should turn off our master. So, yeah, so turn off our master. Uh, you can set the shutoff valves because you don't want it to leak. Uh, and take the headset off and see how much we've flown. Where is the hops meter? Because I should have checked that in advance. There you go. So, five. So we've flown roughly an hour. Uh, we can release the brake, which is released. It's not been put on park, so that's good. Um, We should have cleaned it and... Okay, so... That was the first flight and the first lesson that I had. Um, let me just see if I can think of things that I may or may not have missed. Yeah, so after we talked about uh, a few things, one of which is that um, taxi time does not count as flight time. Um, so for engine maintenance, apparently uh, Technam uh, says uh, flight time is flight time, not taxiing. Taxiing is not time that we count towards maintenance hours. Uh, so depending on your maintenance schedule, if you'd say do it every 75 or 74 or something hours, it should be in the manual. Uh, if you've flown, flown 70 but you've taxied a bunch of times and that's like 80 hours, you don't have to write those. Um, second things we discussed was in case of fire, so there's a few different things. Um, first things first, we should be get out of the plane. Second, um, if you have time and you can think about if it's like an electronic or other kind of problem, you should be able to turn off your master and the plane should keep flying itself, the engine should keep running. Um, that's something I do want to check, so it's fun to do. Um, so let's do a quick check. Uh, say we did a little walk-arounds because we just flown. Um, we're going to 
uh, do the starting engine check, so all our circuit breakers are in. Uh, our throttle should be slightly opened. Um, we're going to put the choke on open fully. Uh, propeller is clear. Master switch is turned on. Ignition switch. Uh, uh, master switch is on. Strobe lights. All our lights, I think, are off, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm going to turn all of them on. And we're going to put the ignition on both and then start the engine. Oh, of course it's not working. Why is it this not working? Take your guess, because I didn't do the uh, startup check and I closed the fuel selectors. So, checklists. Turning on the engine, getting vacuum again. Um, choke, uh, so throttle should be a thousand. Uh, oil pressure should be in the green. Oil pressure is in the green. Uh, and the rest of the instruments are good, so that's good. Um, we should do the radio check, transponders, the ground flaps should be um, takeoff. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, going to call that we're going to do this, parking brake should be released, we're going to check, let's just taxi to somewhere where you can actually take off. So maybe just use the taxiway as a strip, which of course we never should do, but I want to see if something works, so let's go. Everything is secured, Fiat fastened, etc. Flaps are good. Uh, going for a slightly left tendency. Speed is up to 48, pulling up. Um, we are uh, still at the highest. Climb rate, which is the 60, we're going slightly too tight, so I have to put it up again. And when we are at around a 400 altitude, I think it was 400, yeah, uh, get the flaps to up, get back to the climb rate. When we are at 700, in theory, we could join the other leg. So, if I were to have that fire, and if I would turn to would turn the master off, the engine keeps going, plane keeps being able to fly, we still have vacuum. So when, in case of an electrical fire, which apparently smells Swedish, so burning plastic, which I can imagine burning plastic, you can turn everything off, you can still aviate, um, you can still navigate as long as you're there. Uh, and now you could start doing a burn checklist. So you could pop every single breaker. And then hit your master. Uh, hit your master. And then say, okay, which one of these instruments is screwing up? And then if nothing is, you can, or whatever you can find you can still go so that's good um, if it's a burning burning fire so right now uh, say we had a fire in the engine compartment and everything screwed what we could do is um, pull the throttle give maximum flaps get my plane down as fast as I can to so try and find I, th I think this is the case right so uh, try and find a field somewhere which we could land in. Hope that everything still functions the way it should. And then 
and see whether or not I can put her down somewhere without hitting any buildings or things. Okay, so none of these, that, I think there's something there. It's too bad that it's going to be in a turn then, but still. Stall warning. And then get the hell out of there. So that was one thing we discussed, so full flaps, lowering the thing as fast as you can, and checking the electrical fire part. Um, so yeah, um, trying to think if there's anything more, but I don't think so. Um, engine shut down, we can, uh, I, I'm not sure, did I shut the engine down? I don't think so. It should be still running, I think. Yeah, so let's just do the engine shutdowns once again, just because we can. Um, so we keep the engine running down at idle, which it is. Um, uh, we can turn our radio off. Um, we can uh, turn our transponder off. We can put the ignition to closed. Uh, we can remove the key. We can uh, put the strobe lights on. Uh, we can turn the master off. Uh, we can. Oh, technically speaking, it has two starts and landings now, that's fun. Uh, and we could go back to the main menu. Uh, it counts flight time as 40. Fun. Okay, good. Uh, and I can check and see if I can uh, uh, show you guys the... Um, uh, because this, th so this is a log, and the log is kind of the same. So you have your date, you have what did you fly, you had your starting time, your starting place, your starting, or your uh, arrival time, your arrival location. So one and a half hours of um, flight time in this case. So I think that the last part of the half hour, so it should have been a, a should have no, this is weird. Should have been a half an hour. We'll see. Fl the flight time apparently now is forty. Um, and then how many starts or landings that you did. Um, so yeah, um, I'll probably see you next flight lesson, um, and uh, have a great rest of your day.